it finally worked out that we got a nice day where I can get outside and start grinding all the rust off this frame. I'm going to be using a few different methods. I got a drill and a wire brush. I've got a grinder and a sanding flap wheel, grinder and a wire wheel, and then also just a regular wire brush. So let's get this thing outside and start working on it. start painting. Um, same procedure with the paint as with the primer. Light coats, even passes, um, and just stick with your coating times that are um, on the can. Um, a light coat is, or many light coats are better than like one heavy coat. Uh, it just doesn't dry as well. So follow your instructions on your can. Um, we've got the trailer outside. It's a little breezy. It's going to make painting a little bit hard, but down here in southern Alberta we don't have much choice it's always windy here so let's get her out get her going we're going green see got the paint done everything painted that we need to and what is going to be seen after the decking and everything goes on it's looking pretty sharp so at this point while I have the decking off we're gonna get looking and working on the trailer light wiring so First thing we'll do is get everything out, make sure that we have all our supplies and everything that we're gonna to need to get that done. So when you're figuring out your wiring um, and your lights required, it's best to have a look at what you are required by the government um, for lighting associated with trailers. With a trailer this size, I'm required to have marker and clearance lights. Um, so on the front corners, on the sides, I'm required to have yellow lights on the rear corners, I'm required to have red lights uh, for marker clearance lights. On the back, I've got tail lights, two six inch ovals and three two inch rounds. So I went to the store and I've picked up all the stuff that I'm gonna need to install the lights uh, short of fasteners. I didn't grab the required fasteners needed. I'm either gonna need to get some rivets or some self-tapping screws and bolts or whatever. Um, with that, you just wanna make sure that um, they are a conductive fastener, so they don't have a special coating on them that isn't conducted. Um, if you use that, you may not properly ground your lights and stuff. So um, just make sure that it's like a bare steel um, fastener. So I've got my two LED yellow lights, clearance lights, my two red clearance lights. I got my three two inch round lights. Um, these didn't come with grommets or wiring harnesses. So I had to pick up the wiring harnesses for them. So I've got three of those. I've got the two tail lights. They came with grommets and wiring harnesses. These are all LED as well. I've got some split loom tubing. That's for running my wire in. I've got a seven way junction box. 
That I'm going to mount to do all my splice in the back uh, kind of flap panel of the trailer. I'm gonna do all my splice in that and then run it all from there. Got some cable clamps for the split loom just to hold it and secure it to the trailer. I've got the different kinds of wire, or sorry, different colors of wire. This is all 14 gauge primary wire. Um, these different colors I bought to go with um, your typical trailer wiring colors, colors just to make sure that uh, everything is clearly uh, marked and labeled and you know exactly what it's for. Um, heat shrink for my connections. I've got a whole container with all sorts of butt splice connections and ring connections and everything for all doing my terminal connections. You're going to need to get yourself, if you don't have one already, a pair of strippers with crimpers on it to do all your connections with the uh, terminal connectors. I've got a little pen torch for doing my heat shrink. I've saved the old trailer grommets. Um, they're still good. I might still use them, might get new ones, not 100% sure yet. And this is kind of a pretty good thing to have as well. This is a little dielectric grease. If you put some of this on every one of your connections, it's just gonna help protect them against moisture and salt, dirt and corrosion and stuff like that. You, a little goes a long way with this kind of stuff. It's a good thing to have. So uh, I'm gonna look at my lights and how they're gonna fasten. Go pick up whatever fasteners I'm gonna need and we'll get started. First thing we're gonna do is we are gonna mount all the lights to the frame and get the wires pulled through where we need them and then we'll start doing all of our connections. All right, so I went and got my required fasteners. I've got some number 10 by three quarter inch self tappers for fastening um, like my cable clamps and stuff like that, smaller stuff. I got some number 10 by one inch for fastening my lights and whatever else I might need. I got some assorted screws, or sorry, uh, washers, nuts, and lock washers for um, fastening my junction box. I got some new grommets that should work for my lights, so then I've got all brand new stuff on the back. It all should be good, we are set to go. So with your clearance lights, <clears throat> Just use a flat blade screwdriver or something uh, small and flat to get in here and pop your lens cap off. Your lens cap will come off and you'll see that you have two mounting holes and probably some indication of which wire is which. In my case, the red is gonna be positive and the black is gonna be negative or ground. Um, so what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to drill through the frame two holes or use self tappers to fasten the light. And then we're gonna to need to drill a hole through the frame to run our wires. So we're gonna do that. So I've marked a little spot here where it's gonna, I want my light to sit and I'm gonna want my wires to run through and it'll cover up the holes from the old clearance light. Um, and just so I can't see any of that stuff. So I've got it marked, I'm gonna drill it out I've got a 930 seconds drill bit. I just kind of held it up to the wires to make sure that I'm going to have enough room. So I size my bit according to what I'm going to need to fit the wires through. So now I'm going to run my wires through. This can be a little tricky. That's why it helps going maybe a little bit bigger on your hole size. But I've got them run through like so. And now we can fasten with our self tappers and fasten the light. Um, <clears throat> you may want to pre-drill first with your self tapper in order to uh, make it a little bit easier, but uh, I'm gonna just do it the way the screw's intended. So a lot of guys will use an impact driver um, to do this. This is just a regular drill. 
Um, I recommend using a regular drill. Impact drivers sometimes can over torque a little bit. And um, if your screws aren't really high quality, you can end up snapping a screw in your hole. So I recommend just using a regular drill, not an impact. Be careful not to over tighten your screws because you will bust this plastic. So now that we got that first one installed, you can go ahead and put your light cover back on. So we're gonna do that same thing, all four corners. are installed we're going to install the rear tail lights. Uh, first you're going to start with your grommets. These the frame is meant to sit in behind this and in front of this little lip here. It can be a little bit of a bear to get these things in but I find that if you work from one side and go all the way around it seems to be the easiest. You got to apply quite a bit of pressure and just keep weaseling it around. Just double check on the back side here to make sure that your lip is all the way around and in on the frame. So once all your grommets are in, insert your tail lights. So I've noticed with these tail lights in the new grommets, they're a little bit loose. Um, I can switch back to the old grommets and hopefully they'll be tighter. But I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep the new ones and I'm just gonna take some um, exterior silicone, just clear silicone. And just before I'm gonna wire them up, I'm just gonna take a bead of that silicone and stick it around this inside. And once that dries, they're not going to go anywhere. So now I'm going to attach all my wiring harnesses. Um, something that I noticed with my six inch oval tail lights is they came with a little bit of tape covering the contacts and in behind the tape, there's a little bit of dielectric grease. So <clears throat> that was that stuff I was telling you a little bit about earlier. Um, I don't need to add it for the six inch oval tail lights, but I'm just going to take a little dab on each contact for the round lights. And before I stick them in, I'm just going to dab a little bit of that on there. Okay. So I'm going to show you how to do a little butt connection or ring size connection like this. Um, I, I have to go and I have to put these on pretty much all my ground wires for the lights. And this allows me to drive a screw through this little loop to ground it to the trailer frame. So I'm going to show you to do that here just rather than dragging the camera around and doing it all like right underneath the trailer. So just for example, you're gonna need this heat shrink. You're gonna need the proper size connector, which could either, depending on your wire gauge, could be red, could be blue, whatever, uh, yellow, or even just bare without the actual color on it. Um, so I'm gonna show you what to do here. This is 14 gauge wire, so you're gonna take your strippers and put it through the 14 
pull and expose some wire. Just crimp it, pull. So you'll get a little stub of wire out like that. I like to twist it. And then I stick it into my connector. Now, if your connector is the right size, it should hit the insulation and stop. Uh, and then you can trim that up a little bit just so that you don't have a bunch of excess. Trim it up a hair, stick it in. Okay, that looks like it's gonna be pretty good. Before you finish and crimp it, you're gonna to wanna to take some of that heat shrink. You can use scissors or a knife or whatever. I'm just using my side cutters on the stripper. Put this on prior to crimping. You're not gonna get it on if you do it the other way. Stick on your connector and line up the gauge of your crimp fitting with the size on your stripper for your crimping. So this is this middle one is 14 to 16. I know this is 14 to 16. And just squeeze it until it sandwiches. So now you've got a pretty nice tight connection. Slide your heat shrink over, cover that junction, take a torch. Careful not to burn it, and you'll just see it's starting to shrink around. There you have it. Little heat shrink connection. We're gonna do that to all the lights that are missing the little eyelet to screw it. So looking at the connections for my tail lights, they came with a ring connector on the ground, but it doesn't have any heat shrink on it. So I'm gonna cut these off and redo them. Just like I did here and just like I showed you. All right. So now we're going to go around and we're going to fasten all of our ground wiring to the frame. So we're going to put a little self-tapping screw through this hole and into the frame. Wherever you do that, you're going to want to make sure that you get down to bare metal. You can use a little wire brush or something. It may take a lot longer. I just used my angle grinder and a grinding wheel and just lightly took off any paint or rust that is there. Drive your screw through there. I like to drill the hole first or drive the self-tapping screw first and then screw it in. I'm just gonna add a little self-tap or uh, dielectric grease to that connection before it's done. And then after you can go by and you can run some paint over it. You will have metal to metal connection that won't get uh, covered with paint. So you know your ground's gonna be good. We're gonna go ahead and do that to every light connection around the trailer. <laughs> So I'm having a little bit of trouble um, finding a decent spot to ground my rear taillights, these rounds. Um, I never like putting a ground on a horizontal surface or a flat surface like this or this. Water can pool there and it doesn't drain off. And then what'll happen is it just makes it so that your um, connection could rust and corrode a lot faster and then eventually fail. So I decided that I'm just going to extend these wires with butt splices and I'm going to run them all to the junction box that I'm going to mount here. So I have used these little butt connectors. These ones are pretty nice because they got a window in them and you can see if you did it properly. And also I got some heat shrink on there. I'll put over the whole connection and shrink it down when we get to there. But that's what we're going to do for that. Now that our grounds are figured out and all fastened to the trailer, like this. I'm going to go around and I'm going to do all the butt splices. So I got a bunch of little butt splices. I'm going to butt splice everyone so that it's ready to go for running the new wires. So 
now it's time for us to mount our junction box. Um, I recommend getting like one of these little trailer junction boxes. They're pretty sweet. They come with all sorts of stuff. Um, this one has a bunch of different like knockouts in it. So you can run wires in and out. And if you're not gonna use them, they do come with blanks. So it does seal it up, which is kind of nice. Um, they also come with special clips and everything so that you can secure your wires into the box. It comes with all the hardware screws and lock washers to fasten everything down. And what's nice about this one is it has um, the colors for each post and also the uh, labeling for what each wire and where it's going and what it's doing is. So like here is ground, uh, this is black or clear, this is yellow for left turn, this is red for stop, this is green for right turn, and this is brown for tail lights. So it's pretty nice that way that it allows you to um, just kind of hook up a wire. Even if you don't have the right colored wire, you put it on that post and you can tell which uh, function the wire is doing. So I recommend getting one of these. We are gonna go and mount that. We're gonna drill two holes where we want it, fasten bolts and get it to the inside of the back. So now I'm going to um, extend all my wires to go to the junction box. So I'm going to take out some of the color coded wire that I'm using for each light. So like it'll be a different color for the back tail light, different color for the brake light, different color for um, the running lights. So <clears throat> I'm just going to take out what I'm going to need, stretch it out from each light to the junction box, cut it. I'll get a butt spliced in and then I'll get all our heat shrinks connections at the light nice and uh, shrunk up and we'll get everything ready to terminate at the junction box. split loom tube that's going to go to the junction box. I'm going to have one run that comes from the left clearance light and tail light. I'm going to have one run that comes from the three running lights on the back and I'm going to have one run that comes from the right clearance light and right signal light uh, stop light that goes into the box. So we're going to get some loom tubing run out uh, for the proper lengths get them in our junction box uh, knockouts. And what's gonna help with this to keep the wires organized and to put the loom on is a little bit of electrical tape. So we're gonna just kind of tighten our wires up and do a couple wraps of tape, maybe every foot to get our proper length and everything organized and then we'll get the tubing on.
All right, so I've got all my split loom in and my wires all run and they're all come into the box here. I've got the main trailer wire uh, that comes from the front junction box, which is attached to the seven way pin connector. Um, <clears throat> that's run into the box here as well. So that's this wire here, these ones. My first objective into tying these into the box is going to be to tie these ones onto the posts into the right and correct corresponding position. Um, why I want to put these ones in first is because if lights have to be changed, it's one less thing to have to pull off the post in order to get at your right connector. Um, so we're going to go and tie those in. This is where your uh, your color coding on your junction box comes in handy and actually following the color of the wire you don't have to keep track you just know that brown is going to be your running lights green is going to be your right signal and stop lights whites is ground and yellow is your left signal and stop lights you just do your crimp or your crimp on connections and tie them onto these posts with nuts and lock washers and don't forget to put a little uh, dielectric grease. So we are going to do that. We will tie these in and then we will start doing the same with every other wire. Okay, so we finished all of our connections and I put my cover on my box. Then what I did after that was I just went around and I added like cable clips and zap straps to wherever I could just to try and organize and secure the wiring to the trailer so it's not gonna be flapping around or dangling or doing whatever. Um, <clears throat> One thing being is when you do your junction box, make sure that you leave your wires a little bit long. If you ever have a connection come undone and you need to trim and redo it, if you connect it banjo tight, you're not going to be able to reach the same post again. So leave them a little bit long. Um, you can loop them up in there. It's a junction box. Um, there's quite a bit of room in there to loop some wire around and stuff like that. Um, I don't or I have it covered up already, so you can't really see inside, but it is a little bit crowded, but it all fit in there pretty easy. And we've got her all nice and secured, cleaned up. Everything is good. We'll get doing the front clearance lights, and then we are complete with the electrical. So now the electrical's done, we are gonna go ahead and we're gonna start fastening our decking. So as said before, I have two sheets of decking in the front that are going to be uh, the lengthways of the trailer side by side and then one sheet that is going to go horizontally along the back. So what I've done is I've gone around the perimeter and I've marked out 16 inch centers. This one's, start, this one's jogged in from the corner three inches but off the corner I've marked 16 inches. I'm gonna drill a hole there and every 16 inches. 16 inches on, a, on three quarter plywood is pretty ample to fasten down properly. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drill all those holes out around the perimeter. And then once the decking is on, we're gonna go from the underside, drill the holes out up through, and then through the top, we are gonna fasten a carriage bolt. This is a carriage bolt and it has a smooth surface on top, 
so that when you're sliding anything on top, it should slide over without catching. This is a stainless steel carriage bolt, which means that it will not rust or corrode. Um, I got galvanized nuts and washers for the underside because they're a lot cheaper. And for where I can't fasten a carriage bolt, like on this square stock in the middle, the square tubing, I can't get to the underside unless I had a really long bolt and drilled it all the way through. I'm gonna use self tappers. So I've got some of these inch and a half self tappers. Um, they're just zinc and they will rust, but um, I can't really find any stainless ones or galvanized ones or anything. So I might just have to kind of keep an eye on it. And as they start to rust, maybe change them out every couple of years or something. A little more maintenance than I wanted, but um, at this point, it's just, I'm, I'm trying to get this thing done. So um, first thing we're going to do is get all these holes drilled out and then we'll get the deck on. Okay, so the decking is on. I'm gonna show you how to start fastening your carriage bolts. <clears throat> this is our bolt assembly. It's a carriage bolt, a plate washer, whoops, a lock washer, and a nut galvanized. So first thing you're gonna do is go underneath You're gonna drill up through one of the holes that you drilled. Okay, careful not to go too far. Then take your carriage bolt, here out of the way. Take the carriage bolt, stick it in the hole. Give it a couple taps to engage the square part. Then You're going to put a little plate washer, lock washer, and then nut. Just start it finger tight. Now, when you suck this down, I'm gonna use an impact and a socket. When you suck this down, you wanna make sure not to suck it down too far. I've already done one here, and it's just kinda of bowing the outside edge down. You don't wanna suck it too far because it's gonna make splinters wanna come up. I already blew a little bit of a splinter through drilling my hole, but we're gonna add a few more coats of Helmsman, so that should be okay. So you can see as I'm sucking it, a little bit came up there, but it's just because it's close to the edge. There's not much I can do about that. I'm just gonna have to peel that out and uh, fill that with a little bit of surface treatment, but you don't wanna go too deep. We're gonna call that good. So I've already done the one whole row I'm gonna go ahead and finish off the whole perimeter. Alrighty guys, well, I got the trailer all decked here. It's all fastened down the way that I showed you. 
And I didn't really film it, but what I did after that was I went ahead and I gave it another two coats of the Helmsman. Didn't film it because I already showed you how um, these two video series are getting pretty long. So um, two coats of Helmsman, no sanding in between, just 24 hours dry time, and we've got it finished up. Um, that kind of brings me to the next thing. Earlier on in the video, um, I talked about deciding on what to do with the axle and how it needed replacing. Um, I just kind of spent a little bit more money than I had planned to with this build so far. So I decided that the axle is going to be a next year project. So what I did was I knew the tires needed to replace. So I went and I got two new skins for the back tires or for the actual tires that are on the trailer. Got two new wheels or tires put on the rims. Um, I coated the rims with a, what's called protect dip. It's basically the same thing as plasti dip, but I gave the coating um, to the rims just to make them look nice and black. If I don't really like it, or if it starts to chip off, this stuff does just peel off. It's just like plasti dip. Didn't film that either because there's tons of videos online about plasti dips. So you can go on and look at one of those about how it's done. I picked up a new tire and rim for the spare. The existing one wasn't the right size. It was a little bit smaller and the rim was really rusty and the tire wasn't in great shape either. So I bit the bullet and just got a brand new right size spare. Also, um, the old one was mounted right here. So I went and picked up an actual tire mount. This one came from Canadian Tire. It's uh, it's just made for this. It's super easy to do. Um, you just bolt it on the frame and bolt the wheel on, get everything nice and tight and it is secure, it looks sweet. Uh, a couple other things that I didn't film here was I went to Princess Auto and I need some trailer storage. So I just picked up these plastic ammo crates. Um, this little pack itself came with all four crates. So there's a big one, two little ones, and another little one. Um, this is gonna go in here. I've got a little box here that I can probably fit my bottle jack and my bar in. Another box that I can probably put all my little straps and stuff. I can probably fit my tire iron down in the bottom of this. And this one over here, I've got my anchor and my rope in there. For the raft, they've got locking holes so I can get a couple key to like padlocks to add some security. And all I did to fasten these things down was there's that cross plate on the A-frame here is I just screwed down with some self-tapping screws and some fender washers to get them secured down nice. So that's our trailer storage. That's all on. Again, didn't film it. It was just getting a little bit long. That doesn't really need a lot of explanation, but it's all there. Um, also went and picked up a uh, new Reese trailer coupler. The old one was a little bit bent up, really rusty. So I went and picked up a brand new one. Um, this is a pretty important piece when it comes to trailers. This is actually what secures the trailer to the truck. So making sure that this is in good working order is a good idea. Well, that literally brings us to the end of the major part of the trailer build. Hey guys, well, that brings us to the end of this section of the trailer build. I do have a couple other things that I'm planning on doing here, but I'm gonna save those for another couple videos. Um, we're gonna add a bow winch, we're gonna add a roll bar for the back. Um, just get this thing nice and outfitted here. Um, thanks for tuning in. Uh, it was a good build. A couple things that I do differently, but all in all, I think it was a pretty good success. So um, if you have any comments, please leave them. Um, I read everything. Let me know if you think that I did something wrong or I should have done something different. Let me know if there's something that you would have done. Um, let me know if you like it. We're gonna get this thing outside, get it going down the road and see how she rolls. Um, hit like, hit subscribe. There's going to be more stuff coming out here. Um, thanks for tuning in. 
and we'll see you on the next project. Cheers.